Thanks to those who download these podcasts from iTunes. We invite your comments, correspondence, and feedback. My email is at utahchristians at gmail.com. We also have a membership class at our website, utahchristians.org. I'd like to thank those who have taken the membership class become members. Couldn't do what we do without your help and support. Everything is based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of Charity of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Aginati Marandasya Ankanangana Sadaki Achak Surin Minitam Yanataj Mai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Enabutare Sai Om Rupa Karam Yang Danati Sahapanati Kham. So, as you might have gotten a peek earlier, I want to talk to you today about the hand of blessing. In Sanskrit, when the teacher, the mentor, the guru angles his hand toward the disciple with the palm extended out, it's called Ashurbads or blessing. He would call his faithful students before him, direct this mudra, this hand gesture at them, and optionally speak faith filled, loving words over them. One such blessing with uh, words would be Om Shastino Govinda, Shastino Chutananto, Shastino Navashadevo, Vishnu Dadatu, Shastino Narayano, Nono Bhai, Shastino Padmara Purusham Dadatu, Shastino Vishvik Sena Vishveshraha, Shastino Rishike Shul Dadatu, Shastino Benetuari, Shastino Anjana Sutta Honor Bhaktu, Shasti, Shasti, Samangalam, Kesha Mahan, Sikhish Satyana Nanagana Shabe, Shore, Shadro Dadatu. Translation, this is from both the Rig Veda and the Krishna Upanishad. May the great and only Lord of Auspiciousness, Sri Krishna, who is like a transcendental cloud full of Satchitananda, eternally knowledge and bliss, and who is the Lord of all the demigods, bestow upon you all prosperity and auspiciousness. These words and this blessing of the hand from the spiritual teacher would help set the direction for the lives of the faithful students. It was so valuable that blessings from a realized soul would often be the jumping off point for many, many great devotees. Prabhupada's own guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, blessed him to preach in the Western countries. In 1926, Bhakti Siddhanta said to Prabhupada, that will do good to others and that will also do good to you. In our Vedic culture, disciples, children, students, they counted on blessings from their gurus. They would long for the day that they would see their guru's hand angled in their direction. It was a destiny moment. And some of us have received blessings from our fathers, from our teachers, from our coaches. Some of us had good mentors spoke faith over us. And other of us perhaps have not been quite so fortunate. For others of us, our fathers might not have ever been around, or maybe if he was around, he spoke discouraging words. He wasn't happy with you. He'd always tell you what you couldn't become. Not having had the blessings of the past, the present you could think that you're a disadvantage, that you're limited, that you missed it somehow. That's the way this five-year-old boy, Dhruva, initially felt, as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. His father, Uttanapada, Looked down on him, saw him as too small, not worthy. His father, Uttanapada, favored Dhruva's younger stepbrother to inherit the king over Dhruva, who was the firstborn son. Uttanapada wouldn't even let young Dhruva climb up on his lap. Now, Dhruva could have let that sour his life. He could have thought, I can't do anything great. I got the short end of the stick. I don't get any blessings. But Dhruva had a great devoted mother named Sunditi, and she reminded her son that as powerful as our blessings from your natural father, they are unnecessary if you have the blessing of your supreme father, Lord Krishna. She told him, never mind not getting the favor of your natural father, but go to the forest to seek the favor of your supreme supernatural father, Lord Sri Krishna. Later, when Dhruva was lost and wandering in the forest, the great sage Narada Muni gave him blessings from his hand. And because of that blessing, Dhruva was able to see the Lord himself within six months. And when the Lord appeared before Dhruva, he also touched the boy with this result, as described in the fourth canto of the Bhagavatam. Yavanta Pravisha Mabha Vicham Vivam Prishutam 
Sanjivayati akala shakti shodarmaha anyam sahasja charanatarinam pranam hum bhagavateya purushaya tubyam. Dhruva realized the difference between his condition before and his condition after having gotten the hand of blessing from his guru and from the Lord. Upon the enlivenment of his senses by the hand of the Lord, he knew that his previous activities had been like those of a dead man or a sleepwalker. He found that he'd received the mercy of the Lord like a powerful electric current. And his life was transformed forever from that very moment. The blessings of Sri Naraji and the blessings of the Lord ensured that Dhruva would live a victorious life, a life filled with favor, abundance. He would overcome whatever came his way. The Lord completely overrode the neglect of his natural father and marked Dhruva for favor. Krishna marked Dhruva for greatness. He marked Dhruva to overcome all obstacles. And like Dhruva, you also can be a marked man, a marked woman. Marked not by defeat, marked not by failure, but marked by the hand of Almighty God. What other people do cannot stop the blessing. Here's the key. They didn't give the blessing, so they can't take it away. Blessings don't come from people. Blessings come from your Heavenly Father. In the Bhagavad Gita, 9th chapter, 23rd verse, Krishna says, Yepi anyata devata bhakta yajanti shodaya tepi mam kontya yajanti abidi purbakam. Whatever blessing a man may seek from others, O Arjuna, really comes, Krishna says, from me alone, but it is received without true understanding. Krishna says, persons who are engaged in seeking blessings from others, even the Lord of the universe, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Bayu, Indra, as powerful as they are, the persons who worship them are not very intelligent because all blessings originate from me. For example, when a man pours water on the leaves of the branches of a tree without pouring water on the root, would you agree with me that he does so without adequate knowledge? Water needs to be poured on the root of the tree, not the parts and parcels of the tree. Similarly, if you satisfy the Lord and his pure devotees, there isn't any need for the approval of society, family, friends, or even the so-called demigods. Sometimes it's a good meditation. Just close your eyes and picture the hand of blessing on your life. When your dream seems too big, too impossible, there are too many obstacles, you're tired, you don't think you can go on, just picture the creator of the universe, Lord Sri Krishna, who spoke millions of worlds into existence, laying his hands on your head, releasing favor, releasing healing, releasing strength, releasing breakthroughs. You're not limited. You're not lacking. Krishna's hand of blessing will cause you to defeat giants. It'll keep you safe from the neglect of your father, like with Dhruva. It will save you from the deluge of Indra. And like with Gajendra, the elephant, Krishna's hand of blessing will cut the mouth of the crocodile. Why? Because Krishna's hand of blessing is supernatural. Doors will open that you couldn't open. It's a hedge of protection, keeping you safe from what should harm you. It's a divine empowerment. You'll discover abilities that you didn't know you had. It wasn't good luck. It wasn't that you're so skilled. It was the almighty hand of God putting a blessing on your life. Shumad Bhagavatam, third canto, it says, The Lord is eternally very beautiful. He is worshipable by all the inhabitants of every planet. He is ever youthful and always eager to bestow blessing upon his devotees. That beauty of the Lord is not temporary. It is ever existing. He is always youthful, one without a second. Although he is the original person, the oldest, he never appears old. Rather, he always appears Navayovanam Chab as a fresh, blooming youth, no older than 16 or 18 years old. And the Lord's facial expression, I think you'll agree with me, indicates that he is always ready to show favor and benediction to the devotees. 
For the non-devotees, however, he is silent. Although he acts equally to everyone because he's the father of all living beings and we're all his sons, he is especially inclined to show favor to his devotees. As the devotees are always eager to render service under the supreme personality of Godhead, the Lord is also eager to bestow benediction upon the pure devotees. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, 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 Ram, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari. And that's the way you need to see yourself. Happy, blessed, fortunate to be envied, prosperous. Now, the blessing doesn't do you any good if you think you're limited. You've been through too much. Your family didn't support you. You never get any good breaks. Can I tell you that limited thinking is going to lead to a limited life? But a blessed mindset will lead to a blessed life. You may have obstacles, I'll grant you, that look too big. You don't see how you could accomplish your dreams. But the blessing on your life by the Lord is more powerful than any force that tries to stop you. And we use the word bless so commonly nowadays, don't we? We don't always realize what it means. It's potential. How you doing? Well, I'm blessed. Achoo! Bless you. <laughs> They're all good, but... We need to understand what a real blessing is. It's an empowerment where you can live a life of transcendence, not dragging through the day defeated, but joyful. With a spring in your step, a song of praise in your heart, despite the circumstances, you can live fortunate, see good breaks, opportunities. Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto. Kim darapa mai priyate tatapi vibharashi maya kanta matyur bhakti mato banchiti tatpabhi. Krishna says, O best of the demigods, although it is true that nothing is difficult for one to obtain when I am pleased with him, nevertheless, a pure devotee whose mind is exclusively fixed upon me does not ask me for any blessing but the opportunity to engage in my devotional service. Krishna wants to bless you in such a way that others want what you have. You're so happy, so healthy, so successful, so generous, so stable, always in a good mood that you stand out as an example of God or Krishna's goodness. Not barely getting by, but blessed in such a way that you overflow to be a blessing to others. You're not only accomplishing your God-centered dreams, seeing overflow, setting new standards, but you're helping others to rise higher. Prabhupada says, material civilization without the blessing of the Lord is child's play only. As long as the parents allow the child to play, it's all right. But as soon as the parents withdraw, the child has to stop. Human Civilization and all activities thereof must be dovetailed with the supreme blessing of the Lord. And without this blessing, all advancement of human civilization is like the decoration on a dead body. Dhruva Maharaj was insulted by his father. And in response, he wanted a blessing that he would acquire a kingdom that was bigger than that of his father. He prayed for that to the Lord. After six months, when the Lord appeared before him and he saw the beauty of the Lord, all his temporary material desires went away. When the Lord appeared before him and asked him what he wanted, Dhruva said, Shramin kritarto shmin varam nayache. I come in search of pieces of broken glass, but instead in you, my Lord, I have found a valuable jewel. What? more could I want. That's the advantage of devotional service. If you get devotional service, then everything else comes along with it. Once you get devotional service, there's no use for any other profit. Devotional service means love of God, the perfection of the human form of life, that I shall do anything for the Lord. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, was said to be one of the happiest people who ever lived. And once when he was asked about the secret of his happiness, he said, I never said no to God. God has had all there was of me. 
There have been men with bigger brains than I, with greater opportunities, but from the day I got the blessing of God in my heart, I made up my mind that he should have all of William Booth there was. And if there is anything of power in the Salvation Army, it is because God has had all the adoration of my heart, all the power of my will, and all the influence of my life. Now, Krishna wants to bless you in such a way, such a way that others are envious, such a way that others see the blessing of your life, see you standing tall in the service of the Lord. That's what the scripture says, devotees are the head and not the tail. They're above and not beneath. They're lenders and not borrowers. Our encouragement tonight is don't have a limited mentality. Have a blessed mentality all through the day in your thoughts. Krishna, thank you that I'm favored with your devotional service. Thank you that when my race is done, you will smile and raise your hand to me. I desire nothing other than to be known as your good, faithful servant. There is a blessing on your life that will override every negative force, a blessing that will take you to where you could not go on your own, a blessing that will cause things to happen that are unusual, uncommon, out of the ordinary. And that means there's a difference between you and those who don't honor God. Maybe they're not bad people, but there's a blessing on your life that will cause things to happen which defy the odds to where you stand out. People take notice that there's something different about you. When they're struggling, you're succeeding. When they're complaining, you're praising. When they're worried, you're in peace. The blessing causes supernatural things to happen. And Krishna is not limited by your environment, by the economy, by how you're raised, by who's not for you. Why? Because he controls the universe. Now I wonder if you're living with a blessing and you don't know it. Or are you canceling it out with limited thinking? Well, this sounds good, true, but it's not going to happen. You don't know how I was raised. My boss is not for me. I don't have a great personality. It's not important. What's important is the creator of the universe has placed his hand of blessing on you. Now do your part and start thinking that you're blessed, that you have an advantage. That's what allows Krishna to come in and do great things, to prosper you in a negative environment, to promote you when you weren't next in line, to heal you when the medical report says there's no way, to take you to where nobody in your family has ever gone before. I heard about a man named Robert, ordinary sort of a looking guy. He was raised by a single mother, never knew his biological father. When he was five years old, his mother married a man who was very mean, condescending. That man constantly told Robert how he was never going to amount to anything, too clumsy, couldn't do anything right. He was a child. He didn't know anything better. He believed those lies, grew up feeling very insecure, feeling inferior. When he was a teenager, his mother remarried again. Now this new stepfather was just the opposite. He encouraged Robert told him he was talented, that he was going to do great things. When he graduated from high school, he was working as a janitor in the local town. His father asked him what he really wanted to do with his life. Well, he had been beaten down so long. He said, this is all I know how to do is just clean buildings. His father said, Robert, you have so much more in you. You need to get a bigger vision for your life. He said, Robert, I'll make a deal with you. If you go to college, I'll pay for every course, every book, every degree you get. With those words, something came alive inside of Robert. He went back to school, got his bachelor's degree. Then he went on and got his master's degree. Then he got his PhD. He liked it so much, he went to seminary and got another degree. After four degrees, the father said, okay, Robert, that's enough. <laughs> Today, Robert's a very successful pastor, fulfilling his purpose. Don't let what people spoke over you keep you from your greatness. The enemy, Maya, would love for you to live limited, not go after your dreams, not feel attractive, not think you could be successful. And when those lies push you down, you need to close your eyes 
And imagine Krishna's hand of blessing on your head. That blessing is more powerful than what people have told you. It's more powerful than the lies the enemy whispers. That blessing on your life will override every negative voice that's tried to hold you back. The only thing that can stop that blessing is if you believe those lies. If you think you're limited, you can't go any further, you're not talented. Oh, true, everyone in my family struggles. Well, that may be true, but you're the difference maker. You're the one to defy the odds. You're the one to set new standards. If you'll just have the right perspective, knowing that you're blessed, knowing that you're fortunate to be envied, you're prosperous, and like Robert, Krishna's going to show out in your life. He'll take you further than you've ever imagined. Krishna is about to release you into new levels of influence, new levels of resources, new opportunities, new relationships. You're going to be able to say, not as faith, but as fact, I am blessed, I am fortunate, I am to be envied, I am prospered. Now, do your part and live blessed-minded. You can't go around thinking you're average, you've had too many bad breaks, letting negative comments talk you out of it. When you're tempted to think that way, just close your eyes and see Krishna's blessing on your life. In the Mahabharata, we read about Queen Kunti, the mother of the five righteous Pandavas. She had a life packed with troubles, one after another, remembering the many times that Krishna had arrived to protect her and her sons, Kunti stood by the side of Krishna's chariot as he was leaving to go back to Dwarka, and she offered famous prayers in all of Sanskrit literature. She said, Krishna, you're the original personality of Godhead, unaffected by anything in this material world. You exist within and without. You are invisible to all. Foolish men fail to recognize your identity as the super soul and all living beings, for you cannot be known by the material senses. Only those who are free from lust and avarice can approach and know you. You only reciprocate with those who approach you and come to you in love, acting from within their hearts to free them from illusion. It is said that standing outside the royal palace of Hastinapur, which towered above her like a great mountain. Kunti praised Krishna for some time. She described the many occasions that she and her sons had been in danger and how Krishna had saved them. She said, my dear Krishna, your lordship saved us from a poison cake, from a great fire, from cannibals, from the vicious assembly of the Kurus, from sufferings during our 13 years of exile in the forest, and from the great battle of Kurukshetra where the generals fought, and now you have saved us from the fiery weapon of Ashwatthama. And as she spoke to Krishna, it is described that her voice vibrated with a sublime joy. And she said, after all of that, she said, Krishna, I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again. So we could see you again and again For seeing you means we'll no longer see repeated birth and death. Kunti understood that the ultimate aim of life is to achieve freedom from rebirth in the material world. Realizing that her many difficulties in life had forced her to rely on Krishna. She felt that those difficulties had been a great blessing. For she had come to know Krishna as the final goal of all spiritual practices. After describing Krishna's transcendental qualities, Kunti concluded her prayers with a heartfelt plea. She said, O Lord of Madhu, as the Ganges flows forever to the sea without hindrance, let my attraction be constantly drawn to you without being diverted to anyone else. You are my and my son's only shelter. And with her gaze fixed on Krishna's face, she added, as the name and fame of a particular body is finished with the disappearance of a living spirit, similarly, if you do not extend your hand of blessing upon us, all our fame and activities will end at once. You possess all mystic powers and you are the preceptor of the entire universe. You are almighty God. And I offer you my respectful obeisances. And as Kunti concluded her prayers, Krishna smiled and held up his hand, decorated with jewels and 
red sandalwood paste in blessing and chanting everybody who was looking on with his beauty and his grace. And he told Kunti that just as she was always thinking of him, he, the almighty supreme personality of Godhead, never forgot for a moment her and her sons. Krishna said, the pure devotee is always within the core of my heart and I am always in the heart of my pure devotee. My devotees do not know anyone but me and I do not know anyone else but my devotees. The Lord's blessing on your life is a hedge of protection. A thousand may fall on the right-hand side, a thousand may fall on the left-hand side, but His blessing will keep you from danger. You don't have to live worried, afraid of what might happen. Krishna has you in the palm of His hand. Nothing can snatch you away. Yes, we all have difficulties. We all go through tough times, but like with Kunti, the enemy cannot touch you without Krishna's permission. God is in control, not only of your life, but also of the lives of your enemies. And because you have his blessings, there's going to be some should haves. That illness should have taken your life, but look at you. You're healthy and whole. How you were raised should have limited you, but you're successful and strong. That addiction should have controlled you, but you're clean, free, sober, helping others. The pandemic should have taken you under, but you're still standing. You should have been lonely, but Krishna sent someone awesome. Dhruva should have been stuck, but he saw uncommon increase. Robert should have been insecure, limited, but he has four degrees. Kunti should have lost her life to her enemies, but she saw her enemies dead on the ground and her sons sitting on the throne. If you kept the Lord first place, get ready for some should-haves. Unusual, uncommon, supernatural. You couldn't have made it happen. It's the hand of blessing. Krishna is showing out, making you an example of his goodness. Other people are going to see his favor in your life. Now, don't cancel it out by being negative, thinking your problems are too big, you're at a disadvantage. That would be true of ordinary, non-God conscious people. I would believe that if you were average, but you are not average, you're here tonight. Because you keep him first place in your life, the Most High God has placed his hand as a blessing on your head, a blessing that will cause you to go to where you could not go on your own, to overcome that which seems too big to accomplish dreams that look impossible. All through the day, just imagine that hand of blessing on your head. Father, thank you that I'm blessed. I'm happy. I'm fortunate. I'm to be envied. I'm prosperous. If you do this like Druva, you're going to prosper in spite of the neglect. Like with Kunti and her sons, what was meant for your harm will woke out for your advantage. Like with Robert, any negative words spoken over you are being broken. The blessing is overriding the curse. Freedom is coming. Promotion is coming. Healing is coming. Favor, abundance, the fullness of your destiny in this life and next life. Back to home. Back to God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare.